Uh, epigenetics, epi means above the gene. And uh, many years ago, after the DNA helix was discovered by Watson and Crick, uh, they said the blueprints of life, you know, all diseases are created from genes. Turns out less than 5%, more like 1% of people on the planet are born with a genetic condition like type 1 diabetes or Tay-Sachs disease or sickle cell anemia. The other 95 to 99% are created by lifestyle and by choices. You can take two identical twins, exact same genome. One dies at 51, the other one dies at 85. <laughs> same gene, different environment. So all of a sudden they said, we lied. That was wrong. It's not genes that create disease. It's the environment that signals the gene that creates disease. Well, okay. But that's not the whole truth, too, because you could have two people working side by side in the same factory. One gets cancer after being exposed to a carcinogenic for 25 years. Both working for 25 years, the other one has no cancer at all. So there must be some internal order that would cause one person to not get it while another one does. So is it possible then, if the environment signals the gene, and it does, and the end product of an experience in the environment is called an emotion, can you signal the gene ahead of the environment by embracing an elevated emotion? We've done the research on this. We measured 7,500 different gene expressions in a group of people that came to an advanced event for four days. And we had them doing a seated meditation, a walking meditation, a laying down meditation, a standing meditation. And at the end of four days, just four days, the common eight genes that were upregulated, two genes to suppress cancer cells and tumor growth, Two genes for neurogenesis, the growth of new neurons in response to novel experiences and learning. The gene that signals stem cells to go to damaged areas and repair them. The gene for oxidative stress was upregulated. We started seeing all these genes that are very, very healthy to cause the body to flourish. Imagine if people were doing that for three months. We also measured telomeres, the little uh, shoestrings on the end of DNA that tell us our biological age. We asked people to do the work, meditation, five out of seven days for 60 days. Measure their telomeres that determine their biological age. 60 days later, 74% of the people lengthen their telomeres. 40% significant change. 20% a very remarkable change. That means that they got a little bit of their life back. If it had lengthened by 10%, they got 10% of their life back. That's incredible. Before I ask my last question,